Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and in today's video we are going to be solving this problem from MCQ section of rotational motion from the book Pathfinder. So before we begin, uh, I'd like you guys to try out this problem for a few minutes and do comment down below if you guys got the answer to this question correct. So let's begin with the analysis. So we have a cylinder P whose radius is R and it is being rotated at a constant angular velocity of omega P. So the axis of cylinder P is fixed and it is being rotated at a constant omega with the help of a motor. And we have another cylinder of radius rq which is free to rotate about its axis that is also fixed and it is touched with and pressed on p making an angle of theta between their axis so from this particular view that is uh, along the z axis if you look at it then the axis of q makes an angle of theta with the axis of p and initially it doesn't have any angular velocity and it is pressed against this uh, cylinder p which is being rotated at a constant angular velocity. So as you guys can imagine, initially there would be some slipping occurring between these two surfaces. And after some time, the cylinder Q will also start rotating about its fixed axis. So they're saying uh, after some time, a steady state is reached and they're asking us to find the angular velocity of cylinder Q at that instant. And we also have to comment about the friction forces on cylinder Q. Okay, so let's look at an enlarged diagram of the situation. So it's given that the omega of cylinder P is along the J cap direction. So now uh, I want you guys to visualize something. If the cylinder P is rotating in the counterclockwise sense, uh, if we look at it from above, then the cylinder Q should be rotating in this particular sense, right? That is counterclockwise if we looked at it from above, which means the omega of cylinder Q will be in this particular direction over here. So let's try to find out the unit vector along that direction first. So if I draw this se line separately over here, let's draw the axis of P over here. So omega P is in this direction and omega Q would be in this direction, right? So let's try to find the unit vector in that direction. So uh, we know this angle is theta. So if I take a vector of unit magnitude in this particular direction, and if I break it down into two components, so this angle would be theta. So this y cap component would be cos theta and the x cap component would be sine theta. So omega q cap will be the x component is minus sine theta, right? So it will be minus sine theta i cap minus cos theta j cap. So this is the direction of the omega vector of q. All right, now let's try to uh, visualize how this, how the velocity components looks like. So if we look at it from above, this is how the top view of cylinder P will look like, right? So at the contact point between cylinder P and cylinder Q, the velocity of the point on cylinder P is going to be omega P RP, right? So now let's draw a line diagram just to represent how the velocity components are looking like. So this is the axis of cylinder P and let's say this is the axis of cylinder Q. So at the contact point, uh, the velocity of the point in cylinder P is going to be omega P R P again. And let's say after some time, uh, the cylinder Q starts rotating, its velocity will be in this direction and its magnitude is again going to be omega Q R Q. Now again, this angle is theta. Okay, so this is how the basic velocity diagram of the contact point of these two cylinders look like. One more thing, omega P R P will always be constant and omega Q R Q is variable, right? So initially omega Q is zero, so, so there will be no component in this direction. So if we break this omega P R P into two components, one component is omega P R P sine theta and along the ta tangential direction, the component of omega P R P is omega P R P cos theta. What did we do? We broke down the component of omega P along the axis of Q and along the tangential direction at the contact point. Now, as you guys can see, omega p rp cos theta component will rub against the cylinder q in this particular direction in the tangential direction whereas omega p rp sin theta will rub against cylinder q along the axial direction now we have a constraint now due to the constraint uh, of uh, the cylinder q being fixed it's well it cannot develop a velocity along the axial direction which basically means that this slipping will always persist. Whereas this component can be balanced at a later stage when omega q r q becomes equal to omega p r p cos theta. And that is the steady state that they are talking about. It's a state when this tangential component of velocities become equal to each other. Whereas this component will always persist, right? So as the cylinder P is rubbing against Q in this particular direction, that is also the direction of friction on cylinder Q, right? And if you guys have uh, difficulty in visualizing this, uh, take let's take the example of a simple plank and let's say you guys start rubbing your finger in this particular direction. So as you guys can visualize, the uh, as you rub along the surface, the friction from the surface on your finger will be in this particular direction, whereas the friction on the surface will be in this particular direction. So similarly, as P is rubbing on Q in this direction along the axis, the, uh, the frictional force will also be along this particular direction. And that, as we determined in this page, the unit vector along this direction is just going to be the negative of this 
right? So, and that is what they asked in the option C. That is the direction of frictional force on cylinder Q, which is sine theta i cap plus cos theta j cap, which is exactly negative of this, which means option C would be correct, right? As I discussed earlier, the steady state would be reached when these two components would become equal. So basically when uh, in the tangential direction, the rubbing stops. So now let's solve for it. So omega Q R Q in magnitude would simply become equal to omega P R P cos theta, or basically the magnitude of omega Q is going to be omega P R P cos theta uh, divided by R Q. And the direction of omega Q, as we determined earlier, is going to be minus of sine theta I cap plus cos theta J cap. And if you look at the options, it correlates with option B. Okay, so option A would be wrong in that sense. And option D says that frictional forces in each cylinder is negligibly small, which is not true, right? Because uh, simply this component cannot be stopped, which means there will always be a component of friction along this direction. So option D would simply be wrong. If you guys have any doubts, you can comment down below. And if there is any particular question in which you guys would like a video made of, then that also you, can, you guys can comment down below. And I try to make a video on it. And if you guys enjoyed the video, do like, share and subscribe. And thanks for watching, guys.